Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 62. Day, day 3062, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition day 62 and we are, as, just, as it happens, also on page 262. We'll do problem number 17 and 18 in this video. Problem number 17 and 18. Problem number 17 is located at the very bottom of page number 262 and the picture that goes with it is actually on the top of the next page, on page 263. So I'm going to reproduce the picture. It looks something like this. We are given a triangle PQR. P. And we are told the coordinates are negative 2 and 6. R. We are told the coordinates of R are 5 and 0. Here is our x-axis. Here is the point Q. This we are told is right angle. I'm just reproducing what it is given to us. And they give us the y-axis right here. This is the y-axis. As you can clearly see, as you can clearly see that this is a negative 2. The x coordinate is negative 2. So this is the y-axis. This is this we are two units to the left. Let's get going, shall we? Enough of the talk. These are pretty straightforward, simple questions, so we're just going to knock them out one after the other. Part A says, what are the coordinates of point Q? Part A is asking for coordinates of point Q. Well, coordinates of point Q, well, we can see right here, the point Q is located right here. This is a right angle triangle, which if, if this is a right angle triangle, which means this, is the, this line PQ is parallel to Y axis which means the x-coordinate of point Q has got to be the same as the x-coordinate of point P, which is negative 2. And the y-coordinate is very straightforward because it's sitting right on the x-axis. If it's sitting right on the x-axis, it's just negative 2 and 0. Negative 2 and 0. They're looking for the length of PQ. The length of PQ in part B. Length of P to Q. P to Q, right here, to P to Q, right here, this is the length P to Q, which is 6 units. The y, the y coordinate of point P is 6, and therefore the length of PQ is 6. Length to QR is what they're looking for next. Q to R, where is Q to R? Q to R. Q to R, let's do it in a different color, even though we don't need to fuss about it, it's too simple as I said. So, from here to here is 2 units, right here, 2 units, how do we know? Because the x coordinate is negative 2, and from here to here is 5 units, it's not drawn to scale, so 5 plus 2 is 7. It's clearly not drawn to scale. Let's move on. The next they are asking for the length of PR, length of PR, right here, P to R, P to R, which you're looking for. And for that we'll have to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we can use Pythagorean theorem because we're dealing with a right angle triangle. And how do we know it's a right angle triangle? Because they tell us that this is a right angle right here. They tell us that it's a right angle. So let's do that, shall we? We are looking for P to R, let's call it X. So the hypotenuse square, which is our P to R, hypotenuse square, that's XR. Hypotenuse square will have to be the sum of the squares of the other two sides. P to Q we just established is 6. So it's 6 is squared, and Q to R we just established is 2 plus 7, uh, 2 plus 5, which is 7, so it's 7 squared is 36 plus 49. 36 plus 50, 36 plus 50 would have been 86, so it's 85. Because we're not adding 50, we're adding 49. So X is simply square root of 85. Square root of 85. Let's move on to part C. Parameter of PQR. The parameter of PQR is right here. We have the three sides. Parameter of PQR 
is simply 6 plus 7 plus the square root of 85 which is essentially 13 plus square root of 85 and that's all it is and there is not there is not much we can do with 85 and I'll show you why you cannot do much with 85 because 85 happens to be the product of two prime numbers I'll show it to you in a second we cannot divide it by 2 we cannot divide it by 3 how do we know that it doesn't go into 3 because 8 plus 5 is 13 the sum of the digits is 13 and 13 is not divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits of a given number is not divisible by 3 the number itself is not divisible by 5 we're not going to check for 4 because it's not an even number it's not divisible by 2 once we establish that it's not an even number we're not going to check for any even numbers oh, it's just not going to work so let's try 5 how many 5 does 8 have? 8 has 1 8 has 1 5 after we take away 5 from the 8 we have a remainder of 3 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35 and 35 has 7 5's as you can see 85 is simply 85 is simply the product of 5 times 17 what can you do with it? it can be simplified this is it this is the product of two prime numbers that's all there is so it's going to stay like that it's 13 plus square root of 85 that's the parameter part D says area of the triangle PQR area of the triangle PQR part D area of the triangle PQR but we know area simply equals one half base times height base we know is 7 and height we know is 6 so it's just going to be 3 times 7 which is 21 the slope intercept and equation of the line passing through point PR passing through the oh, so now we're talking about the slope and what else? The y-intercept. The slope, the y-intercept. Right here. We're looking for, we want the slope of this line. We want to know where it cuts the y-axis. This line we're talking about PR. We want to know the slope of it. We want to know where it cuts the y-axis. And the equation of the line. So let's do it shall, together, shall we? Let's erase everything. So this is the last part in the problem, part E. So we're dealing with line, line PR, you understand? Well slope is simply the rise over the run, or the change in Y over the, for a given change in X. How much did the Y change for a given change in X? Well the X we going from point Q to point R, the change in X we know is 7. It goes from negative 2 to positive 5. Change in X is 7. And the change in Y is 6. And we also know that it's negatively slow. As we can clearly see, it's negatively slow. There we go. The answer is negative 6, 7. The answer is negative 6, 7. That's all. We know how to do the mumbo jumbo with the two points here. We would have gotten the same answer as this one had we used these two points. And you can do that if you like. If you use the point P and the point R, the change in Y, as you can see, is 6 minus 0. 6 minus 0, that's the change in Y. And remember, we're going from P to R, so we mustn't change the direction. And the change in, change in X is going to be negative 2, negative 2, minus, negative 2 minus a 5. So it's 6 over negative 2 minus a 5 is negative 7, which is exactly what this is. But we don't have to do all this mumbo jumbo. As we can see, the change in x is 7, the change in y is 6, and you can see it is negatively sloped. So that was a slope. <coughs> Let's do the y, y intercept. Y intercept of this line, where does it cut, cut where where does it cut this line? Well, let's use the let's, let's use the intercept slope intercept slope format, which goes from we're gonna use using point R. Using point R right here. And the slope intercept form is mx plus b. Y equals 
mx plus b. We could have used this point, we could have used, we could have used any of the points, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it would have been, we would get the same answer. So here in this format, m as you know is slope, and this is the guy we're looking for, which is the y-intercept. We're trying to find the value of b, the y-intercept. So plug in, plug in the coordinates of any of the points, plug in the coordinates of the any of the points that this line goes through. There are infinite number of points. Actually, we don't, sorry, I, I don't know why I was pointing at Q. That's wrong. We only have two choices, either P or a Q, P or a R. We are using R. If we use the P, we'll still get the same answer. So this, using, using R, the value of the Y is zero. Slope, you know, we just found out a little while ago was negative 6, 7, as we can see, rise is 6, run is 7, it's negative, so that's the slope, negative 6, 7, that's the slope, that's our m, x coordinate is 5, and there is our b, we just have to solve for it, let's do it on the top, or we can continue here, if you multiply, if you multiply, well just leave it like this, bring the b to this side, so negative b, would equal negative 6 times 5 is 30 over 7 and since they are both negative multiply the entire equation by negative 1 and b equals 30 over 7 or if you like 4 and 2 7 because 4 7 is 28 4 7 is 28 and since we are getting 30 over 7 it's 4 and, 4 and 2 7 and we would have get the same we would have gotten the same answer had we used this point and we can show it to you Let's, let's find the same thing using point P. Using point P. Again, mx plus b equals y. m, the slope, is right here. That's our m, that's the slope. Negative 6, 7. And now we're using this point, so the x is going to be negative 2. b and y is 6. Let's see what we get, shall we? Let's see what we get. This is, good. This is going to require more work. The reason I want, I prefer it is because it's just zero. It much, makes it much easier. We can erase all of this thing except the answer. And hopefully we'll get the same answer. So we have to pay attention now, okay? We're looking for, we're solving for, for B. So don't get too confused. This is B. This is my B. And this is 6. 6. And that's the B. So let's multiply the entire equation by 7 so we can get rid of the 7 here. So negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. 12 plus 7b would equal 7 times 6 is 42. Let's subtract 12 from both sides. As you can see this is more work. We get 30 equals 7b and therefore b equals 30 over 7 just like before. Do you understand? But if you get an opportunity of, employ, of uh, making use of a zero, why not do that? Whether you're multiplying or adding, especially when you when, when in multiplication, because if you find an opportunity to use a point where zero appears, then zero times anything is zero. It simplifies your work a great deal. Or even adding and add addition and subtraction. Zero is just you don't have to do anything. So that was that was the y-intercept. What is the last thing they're looking for? They're looking for the equation. Well, the equation is very straightforward. We have it right here. We know the we know the slope. We know we just found out the intercept. We have the equation. M x plus b equals y. M is negative six seventh. X plus b, we just found out, thirty over seventy. Thirty over seven equals y. That's that's the equation, which is the last part, which is the part e. Multiply the entire equation by 7. If you multiply the entire equation by 7, or can we just leave it like this? Let's multiply the entire equation by 7. If you multiply the entire equation by 7, we're going to get negative 6, 6, negative 6 times x, which is going to give you negative 6x plus 30 equals 7y. We're going to put it in a standard form. Let's bring the 6x to this side. So we can end up with 6x plus 7y equals 30. Bring the 6x to that side by adding 6x to both sides. If you add 6x to both sides, we're going to end up with 30 equals 7y plus 6x, which is same as saying 6x plus 7y equals 30. This is more of a standard form. There's the equation. That was the end of number 
17. Let's see what they're looking for in number 18. Shall we? Number 18. Time for a little break. Question number 18. In 18 it says, in the xy plane, find the following, the slope and the y-intercept of the line. So here's the line. y plus x equals 6 we are told. 2y plus x equals 6 and we are asked to find the slope and the y-intercept. Let's see what we can do. Let's put it in the standard form like this one, mx plus b. So we have to, we have to write it in, so, so let's, let's, bring, let's bring the x to that side so we can end up with 2y equals negative x plus 6, divide the entire equation by 2 and you can end up with y equals negative 1 over 2 x plus 6 over 2 which is just 3 which is just 3 so y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 and right here is the equation that we can use the slope intercept form right here so I'm going to, with the arrows we're going to show which part is which so this m here that you see here the slope which is which goes with the x here which is right here. The slope is negative one half, and y. What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is right here, which is three. So we just answered it. The y-intercept is three, and the slope is negative one half. That was part A. Let's look at part B. Part B says. The equation of a line passing through the equation of a line equation of a line passing through three two with a Y intercept of 1. So the line that we're looking for has to meet two conditions. This must have a y intercept of 1 and it must go through a point with the coordinates of 3, 2. Let's see what we can do. Let's first find the slope. Let's first find the slope and the way we're going to find the slope is by plotting it and for that we need the room. So I'm going to erase all of this part right here. Let's, let's plot what we know. So we do know that it goes through 3, 2. 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. It goes through this point, let's call it point A. We also know that it has a y-intercept, it has a y-intercept of 1. Y-intercept which means right here. It goes through 0, 1. It has a y-intercept of 1 which means it goes through this point right here, point B, which has coordinate of 0, 1. It goes through point A which has a coordinate of 3, 3, 2. Let's find the slope. Once we know the slope, again we're going to use the same for mx plus b. Because once we find the slope, we know the y-intercept. Y-intercept is 1, which is b. The slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. And here we have to pay attention as to which directions we are going. We must always pay attention if we decide to go from A to B, we cannot in the halfway through the story switch the direction and start going from B to A. So pay attention, we're going from A to B. Going from A to B, the change in, and second thing we have to pay attention, a common mistake, second common mistake is, we must pay attention, we're looking at the Y now, Y coordinate, which is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1, and now the X coordinate, which is 3 minus 0. So it's just 1 over 3. It's just 1 third. The slope is 1 third. The slope is 1 third. Which means when I was working, yes, yeah, slope is 1 third. That's it, we're done. Right here, y is equal to 1 third x plus 1. 
There we go, there is the equation. Y is equal to one third x because slope is one third, we just found out, which is the m. One third, one third x plus one, which is the y intercept of one. That's all. Let's look at part C. Part C says the y intercept of a line with slope three, well, let's just write all of that down. Y intercept of a line with slope three that passes through. negative 2, 1. That passes through the point negative 2 and 1. What can we do? Again the same thing. y is equal to mx plus b. This is the slope as we have told, as we have said a number of times already and this is the y-intercept. b represents the y-intercept. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for y-intercept of the line. And we know a point right here, negative two and one. So that we know we can we can put substitute x and the y because we know a point that the line goes through. Let's put in its coordinate. Again, pay attention. Negative two is the x, positive one is the y. And slope happens to be three we are told. Slope happens to be slope happens to be three right here. plus plus b which is the guy we're interested in so we just have to solve for b 3 times negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 so we get 1 equals negative 6 plus b bring the 6 to the other side and we end up with b equals 7 the y intercept happens to be 7 for this for this line Part D, it says X intercept of all the lines A, B and C, all the three lines that we just discussed in part A, part B and part C, they're looking for the Y intercept of all of those three lines. So let's, let's first put them together. Let's put them, we need the room obviously. So I'm going to first put down all the lines that we had. Part, part A, we found the line to be right here, 2y plus x equals 6. That was the part A. 2y plus x equals 6. In part B, we found the equation of the line to be y equals 1 third x plus 1. And in part C, we just finished, I shouldn't have raised it, right here. Right here. So mx plus b. Right here is the equation. y equals m which we know is 3. x plus b which is found out is 7. Those are the three equations we're dealing with and they're looking for x-intercept. x-intercept. Where do we see x-intercept? Of course you know where it is. I'm just being silly. If, the, if this is the line, where does it cut x-axis? Right here it cuts the x-axis where y happens to be 0. So we're just going to equate all of these three equations one by one where y is going to be 0 and we're going to solve for it. So let's begin. The number 1. Number 1 right here. 2y plus x equals to 6. Put y equal to 0 because that's where it is. y is equal to 0. 2 times 0 is going to be just 0. So x is equal to 6. So for this one, x intercept is 6. That's the first one. Let's go to the next one. Number two. The equation is right here. Y is equal to one third x plus one. Put the y equal to, set y is equal to zero. Set y is equal to zero. 
Let's multiply the entire equation by 3. When we multiply the entire equation by 3, 3 times 0 is just going to be 0. So 0 equals 1 times x is just x and 1 times 3 is just 3. Which means x must be negative 3. Which is this guy negative 3 which is the second one. Let's do the last one. Right here. y is equal to 3x plus 7, set y equal to 0, 3x plus 7, subtract 7 from both sides and we end up with 3x equals negative 7, divide both sides by 3 and we end up with x equals negative 7 third. x equals negative 7 third. Oh, no. There you have it. Those are the three x intercepts that we were looking for. For the first one, the x-intercept happens to be 6, for the second one it happens to be negative 3, and for the third one we just found out was negative 7 third. That was the end of it, that was problem number 18. Now listen to what I have to say next for the uh, for a few seconds. Today is, our, today is our lesson number 362. So what I'm about to tell you is for, actually I need the room, so I'm going to erase something here. I'm going to erase this thing, so that we can talk about what I have to say. For the next four days, day, 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 63, 64, 65 and 66, we're going to do parabolas. Even though the next problem, problem number 19, only has one parabola, and we're going to call that number 19 in the next today's tomorrow's video. The parabola see, that you see in question number 19, we're going to refer to it as part A, and then we're going to do uh, tomorrow we're going to do that, and then over the next three days, we're going to do after tomorrow, the following three days, we're going to do part B, C, and D, which do not exist in the book. So we're going to do, deal with four parabolas instead of just one. Here's your homework for tomorrow. The parabola that they give us is this, x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to y we are told. I want you to work on that parabola and describe this parabola. So whenever somebody asks you to describe a given parabola, if they give you an equation of a parabola, if they give you a quadratic equation, quadratic equation of course represents a parabola, if they ask us to describe it, essentially they're looking for the salient feature features of the parabola, not feature, features of the parabola, such as where does it cut the x-axis? It's going to cut the x-axis usually at two points because there are two solutions. So we're looking for x-intercepts. We're looking for where does it cut the y-axis, y-intercept. We're looking for the line of symmetry. What are the coordinates of the vertex? Where does it, uh, and essentially what shape does it have? So we're going to freehand plot it after we have those points. So x-intercepts, x-intercepts, y-intercept, the coordinates of the vertex, line of symmetry. Those are the kind of things we're looking for. Do you understand? Work on it on your own, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow. And then after that, we're going to do three more times after tomorrow. So that's going to be day number three, 363. Four, five, and six. We're going to do three more, one by one. And I'll give you the homework each day. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. Make sure you work on your own, and that's so that, so that you can compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in the next video, in tomorrow's video. Okay? Bye now.